Good afternoon, comrades. This is the second attempt I've had at starting this video. I forgot what day I was on. Boy, cabin fever's really getting at me. I don't know about you. But I thought, as I now know that it is day 19 of lockdown, I thought I'd start from a different location. I'm kind of going to run out of locations, but with my loving knowledge of Boris and fridges, yeah, I'll start from near our fridge. Just one second, because as we don't see much of Boris, I just want to check he isn't somewhere and I just haven't noticed. Hold on a sec. Boris? You in there? Come on, Prime Minister, come out. It's okay, you're safe. Boris? Look, I'm sorry that Carrie's got it, okay? I really am sorry. Yeah? I wouldn't wish it on anybody. Boris? I wouldn't even wish it on you. Come out, Boris. Can you come out? Come out. Shall we see if he's in there? Well, sadly, he's not. But it was worth a try. Okay. Ooh, that lovely cold air coming out. Look, when you've been isolated for a while, even things like opening your fridge get exciting. Okay. But just to put that in perspective and to say it really quite genuinely, I wouldn't wish illness and this virus on anybody. I'm a human being, not an absolute scumbag. I wouldn't wish it on Boris. I wouldn't wish it on Carrie. I wouldn't wish it on my enemies. That's not how I work. I don't mean I like Boris, by the way. Oh, no. Doesn't mean I still think he should... Uh... Well, I think he should have acted a lot sooner, don't you? Anyway, look, all that much aside, day 19, eh? How's it going with me? Well, mentally okay. Um, my wife has been at the allotment at the moment with her mother. Not sunbathing, by the way. Social distancing. In fact, they are so in to social distancing that they're planting their rows of vegetables like an entire metre apart. So allotments are now socially distancing vegetables. Yeah. So when they finally grow, well, at least we'll be eating socially distanced vegetables. Yep, yeah. keep up with social distancing. My father-in-law had a myocardial infarction and uh, was admitted to a hospital very quickly. Uh, I am happy to say that uh, he's had a stent and uh, they're hoping to get him home soon. So massive thank you to the NHS, obviously. Whatever is happening, the NHS is still there. It was functioning for him, saved his life. And massive thank you to the NHS. Now it's nice out there, isn't it? Mm. It's absolutely gorgeous. We can go out for exercise, okay? Exercise is all right. But don't tear the arse out of it, will you? Putting on your jogging clothing and jogging for about a bloody mile in either direction does not count as exercise, all right? Sunny, sunning yourself on the beach with hundreds, maybe thousands of other people around you. You can sunbathe in your garden if you want, yeah? Vitamin D is important, but go and stand outside in your back garden or whatever. I don't think that will do any harm, okay? Get the rays in your garden, yeah? Don't think that you have to spread, you have to congregate, because, well, 
you really do need to get out and it is doing your nutting i'm sure it is but obey the lockdown yeah otherwise yeah quite rightly so it's gonna get even stricter you're gonna have to exercise with mr motivator in your home all you're gonna be able to do is press ups squat thrusts and all that lot yeah running on the spot yeah so obey the bloody lockdown will you i can't i really don't care if you're a bunch of selfish assholes remember that you're not only protecting yourself you're protecting the nhs and you're protecting vulnerable people Along those lines then, as it's all going, what do I think will come next? Well, it looks pretty much like we're going to review lockdown about the 13th or 14th of April. Um, who have we added in the year? Oh yeah, we've had old Medley. Yeah. Thanks, Prof Medley. Great to know that you're back up there with the, with the herd immunity again. Great stuff, Prof. Great to know it wasn't off the agenda Great to know that if we just take all the lockdown away, everyone boogies on down, shops till they drop, the economy does a massive, massive upturn, everybody's back to work, yeah, and then 70% herd immunity, but to get that herd immunity, how many of your, uh, your parents are you gonna kill? Grandparents, sick and disabled people, how many people like my father-in-law is coming home from hospital soon and my mother-in-law both in their 70s yeah to get your to get your 70 percent eugenic herd immunity how many of those are you going to kill how much are you going to deluge the nhs by so that it can't cope yeah think about that yeah because I don't think it's beyond the bounds of possibility. And I know I opened by talking about Boris and I opened by talking about Carrie. But I honestly don't think it's beyond the bounds of possibility that that will be it. Bottom line will be the economy is going to hell in a handbasket. We're not producing. We're not making. We're not delivering. Um, we really need to get going again or there will be food riots and uh, all the fruit and veg will be left in the fields to rot. We'll all starve and it'll only be people like my wife and her mother up at the allotment who will have anything to eat. Yeah, I fear, and I really do fear, that this may well be everything unlocked. Yeah, back to business as usual spoons open all the restaurants open have a cough party have a covid19 party infect your friends infect your co-workers infect your nan infect your granddad infect your kids yeah because just like measles once they get an immunity they'll be fine as i say we'll be having covid parties so that everyone can get an immunity yeah don't know quite where that's going. But all I can say is there is some good stuff out there on the internet, believe me. Some really good stuff, some helpful stuff. I'm aware that this is Palm Sunday as well. And uh, if you're a Christian, worth uh, paying a bit of attention to Palm Sunday. Because, and someone mentioned this in something I heard online, and I liked what he said. It was about two leaders entering the city of Jerusalem. Pilate, on one side, good old Pontius over there, hi there Pontius, and Jesus on the other side. Pontius, being the kind of guy that he was, the kind of ruling type guy, the kind of, the kind of emperor type guy, he enters this city on a horse. Big bloody thing, I imagine, yeah? Like those kind of Roman horses they used when they played bloody drums and all this. Like you can imagine Pilate just entering in like that. Power 
authority, majesty, kingdom, everything belongs to him. On his say-so, people live or die. Jesus, on the other hand, has a word with a couple of his disciples, about three of them, tells them, go and get a colt and a donkey. How does he enter? By another gate, humbly, without recognition, except by a few. Contrast, power and humility. Contrast, the dog must be hearing me, contrast, love, and just abject power, authority, yeah. I know the one I'll go for. There's actually power in love. There's even power in humility. There is greatness in that which is least. Remember that. I'll leave the dog to uh, bark its way out for me. Bye.